Hey guys, this is Nate from RunDreamAchieve.com. Hope you guys are having a great week of training. Uh, today's video, I want to talk on how to run a mile faster without getting tired. I had one of my uh, subscribers, it looks like, uh, I'm not sure uh, of the name of the subscriber, uh, but somebody from Korea asked a question of, I've only been running about two to three months. My mile time is 8.46. I've pretty much I have pretty much a year to get that down to 6.30, 6 minutes and 30 seconds, but I have no clue as to what I'm supposed to do for training. Any help from anyone is greatly appreciated. So definitely reply to this uh, subscriber uh, and, and give your tips as well. You know, I can, I can definitely do the best I can in regards to, um, you know, just giving you some ideas of what you really need to do. I mean, the mile is a very, very fast anaerobic effort so you know you really have to continue to uh, be patient with yourself when it comes to uh, trying to improve your leg speed leg speed really takes some time to to uh, to improve upon so uh, is it possible to go from 846 all the way down to 630 in one year uh, I think that is that's a highly aggressive uh, effort for sure um, but it, nothing's impossible. I mean, when I was a freshman in high school, my best mile time, my best mile was a 530, okay? Uh, and that was in 1992. So fast forward to 2007, I averaged five minutes and 19 seconds per mile for 26.2 miles for my marathon. So, you know, back in, in 1992, I would have never dreamed of running that fast for that far. So you have you have to believe big. You have to have big goals. Um, and and I like the fact that you're wanting to really gun, you know, really push yourself to go from 846 down to 630. But I just want to caution you just to be patient with yourself because, uh, you know, yes, you can drop a ton of time in all of the events. But the shorter the event, the more anaerobic, anaerobic it is. So, uh you know, I don't know how old you are. Maybe you're very young, uh, you know, and and middle middle to long distance running success really takes time, uh, you know, and, and you can still run great times in your 50s, 60s. You know, I'm 44. I just turned 44 a few days ago, uh, and I still enjoy running, but I, I don't really uh, race anymore. But uh, that being said, I really want you to focus on the fundamentals, which is really focus okay you want to run 630 so you have to spend some time during the week training at paces that are around that pace now granted 630 pace is very high quality considering that your best mile time is 846 uh, spend some time first trying to to run under eight minute mile pace see how that feels you know once you start cutting down time and you start dropping significant amounts of time off your mile time you're gonna see that 630 is definitely possible uh, in in due time uh, a big headache and a big issue for a lot of athletes is they want results too quick uh, and you said here you've only been running about two to three months so you have so much potential there, there's so uh, there, there's no limit to what you can do as a miler you may find out down the road that your best event may be the half marathon or maybe the 5k but you, you know, right now, if you, and the fact that you've been running for only two to three months shows me all, all, you know, all the more that you can run a 630, but you have to follow what the best di middle distance runners are doing. And a lot of them, if they're going after a specific time, they're training at specific paces. So in your case, you need to run 630. You want to run a six minute, 30 second mile. Um, so you need to be able to run 315 per 800 but for two times. So you have to spend some time first getting accustomed to uh, sprinting and, and, and you know working on your leg speed because 6.30 mile pace is going to feel like an all-out sprint right now for you because one, you've, you're very new to the sport. Um, two, your personal best right now is 8.46. So going from 8.46 all the way down to 6.30 in, in a matter of 12 months, uh, highly aggressive goal. Uh, I love that. Uh, I love that about your question. I've always been like that too. Uh, I think it's very important to really go after like crazy goals that most people are, you know, will say is is uh, not feasible. I certainly think that you can do it, uh, but y again, you're going to have to one definitely focus on your volume. Uh, you have to be putting in 
you know, qual quality mileage over quantity. So don't get so caught up in how many kilometers a week you're running or how many miles a week you're running. What I want you to do is focus on spending some time, you know, a, a higher percentage of your weekly volume each week. Say you're running uh, 30 miles a week, okay, or you start running 30 miles a week. You can you can definitely run a quality mile off of 20 to 30 miles a week because the mile is so short. Uh, it, yes, it is a high anaerobic event, but you don't need to be running crazy high mileage for, for training for the mile. It's not like the 5K. It's not like the half marathon or the marathon distance. So uh, spend some time doing, uh, like I always say in all my uh, a lot of my other videos, and uh, all the training programs on Run, Dream, Achieve, uh, the, the courses that I have, I always have my athletes spending at least two to three times a week running strides, doing those strides. So those are short sprints, 50 to 100 meters in length. They're not enough, uh, they're not long enough to build up any lactic acid. So, but over a long period of time, over, you know, many weeks, many months, you're spending miles running at sprint paces. So regardless how good you are, uh, you know, in your case, you're very new to the sport, but if you're somebody that's a veteran, such as myself, we can always work on our speed. So speed is what is what kills when it comes to the mile, okay? It's, it's very fast, it's very quick, it's over quick. Uh, so for you to drop that amount of time in amount of, in amount of one, in one year, you do have to uh, focus on track work, uh, start running longer pace or a, a, a higher heart rate for a longer period of time, a higher percentage of your maximum heart rate. Uh, over a longer period of time for your long runs and don't do that every single weekend but if you're doing that every other weekend you're spending one uh, say you, you spend a uh, say it's a 16 week block of training that you're doing a four month block of training leading up to your your goal mile time spend that first four weeks just building your base mileage don't get caught up in I got to get on the track or I have to do these these workouts just start building easy base mileage and then do those strides every other day Okay, and then as you move into week five, start focusing more on specific track work, track work and road work. That may be uh, fartlek runs where you're doing uh, 20 times one minute hard, one minute easy. If you're wearing a heart rate monitor, I would run the hard effort uh, probably around 165 to 170 beats per minute. Drop it back down to around 120 to 150. 40 beats per minute for easy. So you can really run anywhere from 120 beats to 150 beats per minute running easy. Now again, don't get so caught up with heart rate monitor training because it, it also depends on your age. Okay, so if, if you're 20 years old, you're going to have a much higher uh, maximum heart rate than say for me as a 44 year old. Okay, so it's it's really about effort more and about how you're, you're running off a of feel. Okay, so if you're running so fast that you can't hold a conversation, you're running closer to uh, your, your anaerobic threshold, and that's closer to around 92 to 94 percent of your maximum heart rate. If you're running aerobic capacity, that's, that's like your VO2 max efforts. That's kind of like 175 beats. That's like more 96 percent above or up to 100 percent plus of your maximum heart rate. So you can really only spend a few seconds to a few minutes. Um, running at these types of speeds but that type of effort is what you do want to run to be able to get down from an 846 mile down to 630 so you want to spend a little bit of time each week training at those types of intensities and pay very close attention to those recovery days because all the benefits and all the um, the physiological adaptations that that occur from doing these types of workouts occur within the rest so that's where a lot of athletes get it wrong. We feel like we always got to push. We always got to keep putting in more mileage and more kilometers. Um, and where it's really, you're putting in the, the proper amount of work, but you're, st you're not resting enough. Okay, so it's a, it's a balance of, of hard anaerobic workouts and very relaxed, easy runs. I've trained with world-class Kenyan athletes, Europeans, Americans, uh, that were, would literally jog you know, 10 minute, 11 minute mile pace on their easy days. I mean, extremely slow, but they could go out and run a marathon under five minute mile pace. You know, these guys were even much faster than I was. And my personal best is 219.35 for the marathon. But these guys would run 210 to, 
you know, uh, 209 to 211 range for the marathon distance. So if they can run that slow on their easy days, it should, it should also tell us as, as mere mortals, uh, that we can, uh, also run very relaxed on our, on our easy days. So, uh, to answer your question, I, I know it's long winded, but I just want to, you know, share as much as I can to help you out. Pay attention to spending some time training at that goal pace. You want to run a 630 mile. So you need to go out and experience what running 630 mile pace feels like. So that might be, you know, it may be uh, only 400 meters right now. You know, get on the track and run a 630 uh, pace uh, quarter and then give yourself 60 seconds. Do one at, uh, and then do one at maybe eight minute mile pace effort. As, a, as like kind of a recovery slash moderate effort, recover, then do another effort, you know, quarter at, at 6.30. And as you get stronger and as you build your endurance over time, okay, this isn't going to happen in a matter of weeks. This, we're talking months, possibly a, a couple years. You know, like I said, anything is possible. You know, if you put in the heavy work, you're doing the, the you're allowing yourself a time to rest, you're paying attention to nutrition, I stress this all the time. There are resources on both my sites, RyanDreamAchieve.com and NutritionGeeks.com. One, Nutrition Geeks is nutrition. Run Dream Achieve is more about mindset, uh, race performances, uh, and a little bit of, um, yeah, it's basically, basically mindset, preparation, what workouts you need to be doing, and NutritionGeeks.com is more about nutrition and business. So, uh, definitely check those resources out. But that that's kind of where I, I, I would give you in terms of my advice to go from 846 to 630. It's like any event. You have to spend time training at your goal race pace. And, it, and you're not going to be able to spend much time running at race pace uh, for very long, especially when you're focusing on the shorter distances. If you're training for a marathon or a half marathon, uh, a 10K, uh, it's a little bit different in terms of the mile and the fact that you're so new to the sport just uh, the be patient with yourself that's probably the number one uh thing to to keep in mind in terms of middle distance to long distance running success far too many of us want results too quick and we're we're not willing to uh have that belief in delayed gratification the best distance runners middle distance runners in the world know that great results come about over time, okay. So, pay again. Pay attention to the to the, uh, the fundamentals. Spend some time training at at you know get out and do those once a week long runs, okay. So for you only been been running two to three months, try to go out and just you know f- uh, four to six miles for your long run, okay. And just each week continue to put in that 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 volume, but don't, again, don't get so caught up in like, I got to run, you know, a a high mileage to run a fast mile time. That's not the case. Not especially with the mile. Okay. You you can run a, you can run a quality mile, especially as a beginner off of, you know, 10 to 25 miles a week. Okay. You just need to continue to spend a little time training at your goal race pace, get used to feeling what 630 mile pace feels like. And again, you're not going to be able to spend much time running at that pace because you're one, you're very new Two it's the mile. Okay. Your personal best is 846. Spend some time training at below eight minute mile pace and then lengthen the amount of time you're training at over time, over a 16 week block of training, then get used to training under, you know, 730 mile pace and then under seven minute mile pace. Start spending more time each week and each month getting used to running at paces that are closer to that 630 mile pace. That is the key. When I was a, a 243 marathoner, my goal was to run two hours and 22 minutes. So I had to go from running, you know, visualizing myself running at 614 mile pace, which at that time, when I was a 243.36 marathoner, I was thinking, how do I go from 614 mile pace all the way down to five minutes and 25 seconds per mile for 26.2 miles or 42 point, uh, you know, two, two kilometers. So it's, it, it is a mindset thing too. You have to visualize yourself seeing what you want well in advance. Your, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between reality or imagination. And the great Billy Mills said that exactly. That was his, that was his quote as well. Uh, he said, the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between reality or imagination. So your, your mindset's in the right, right area. 
right now you're an 846 marathoner, there's no question. It is possible to go from 846 to 630 in a year. And I and I hope a year from now you come back to this particular video and, and you let me know, you know, comment. You know, I, I encourage everybody that's on this channel. Leave leave me a comment. Leave me a question. I don't I don't have no issue making videos about answering your questions. Um, I, I, that's one of you know. And I'm kind of retired from the sport now, but I ran for 28 years. I still run now, but it's more for fitness. But I spent about 28 years of my 44 years uh, competing at the highest level. I made two world world armed forces cross country teams. Uh, I earned a, a USA Olympic trials. USA Track and Field Olympic Trials A Standard Time in the Marathon, breaking two hours and 20 minutes. Um, so, and I've had ups and downs. I, I'm just like you. I'm no different than you, than anybody else. It's just you have to find that fire and that drive to keep you going when you're doubting yourself and when you're feeling like, man, I, I just don't have what it takes. That's BS. You have what it takes, but you also have to put in the work and you have to be persistent enough and tenacious enough to do the work even when you start doubting yourself because that's where most people let up right when they're so close to reaching their goals. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you're brand new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit that bell icon, share this video with as many people as you can or any of my videos and, and, and share them with other people that you know, either if they're beginners or, or, or veterans of the sport. You know, my goal here now is to help as many athletes as I can. That's why I've, I've built resources on RunDreamAchieve.com for beginner level beginner level athletes all the way up to elite level athletes that are either maybe you're trying to qualify for the Olympic trials or uh, earn a Boston qual Boston Marathon qualifying time or you're trying to run a 6:30 mile such as yourself. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys, and I will talk to you all in the next video.